like for example, someone calls out your name, uh, is not going to directly mean a life or a death thing. You still need to traverse through two parts of your thinking process. One of it is your thoughts, right? And the other part, which you kind of think of, is also your body. Um, everyone, take your hand, place it here. This is your second brain. This is also known as your gut brain. According to science, they also found that the second largest uh, congregation of neural uh, networks is actually inside your stomach, inside your gut. So some people say it's the gut feel. Now you know why there are butterflies inside your stomach. It's because this thing is kind of like firing and you're not sure what exactly is going on there because it's not really necessarily in control. Now these two things affect each other. How many of you have this idea or you, you believe that if you believe strongly enough, standing on stage is no problem. Just believe it. You just need to believe in yourself. How many of you believe this? Interesting. So uh, can, can you just do that right now? I believe I'm a good speaker. I believe I'm a good speaker. And then later on I call out your name. <laughs> Get it? So what's happening is that your thoughts have not been adjusted yet. So the trigger event is going to trigger off the original thought that you have in your mind. Prior to going up there, I can tell you this. During my preparation for... Okay, so uh, maybe I should relate this to you. I have been sabotaged by this day in, day out. During the first time I started participating in Toastmasters competitions. 1998, I took part in my very first one, got disqualified. I was a little bit upset, but this guy came up to me and said, actually, you've got something going with you. you. just need to pay attention to your structure and your time. I said, oh, that's interesting. Now, what do you mean by that? And we started the whole conversation going, and I went, yeah, I'm going to go for it again. 1998, I participated in a total of three competitions, flopped all of them. 1999, I went up for, for I started focusing just on table topics because it was shorter. <laughs> so I just went up, I did my presentation, and uh, for some strange reason, from 99 to 2000, I came in second all the way. Right? So I made it to like area second position. Then in, 19, uh, in 2000, I came in second in the division. Now, you have to understand where I'm coming from, right? I cannot, as a corporate trainer, go up and say, you've got to take my contract because I'm number two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need to have a certain kind of a branding to a certain extent. So 2001, I tell you I was voracious. I went to almost literally every open slot that I had as an evaluator. And since I was there as an evaluator, what do you think I did? <laughs> Take part in table topics, right? And the moment someone read out that uh, table topic, I would just jump up and I'd just go up there and just deliver my presentation. And what was interesting was I didn't know back then that I was actually training my thinking and training my body to get primed to the feeling or what we call the emotion, right? So your thought and your body actually both create this thing called your emotional state. And this emotional state is critical. Most of you have this out of control. But once you're able to drill your thinking and your body in the same direction, coming up here is gonna be a joy, you know? So one of the things that I typically do is I visualize. How many of you visualize? The most terrible things happening to you on stage, right? <laughs> <laughs> But, but the truth is, if you had prepared ahead of time, most of you would have prepared the script. Yes, you have prepared the script, you have prepared the framework, you prepared your, maybe even your facial expressions, maybe your body language, that's what you prepare. But most of you would not have prepared your thought, your inner thought to say, the moment I, I hear a topic, I'll stand up with absolute confidence and come up on stage and smile at the audience. Pause for a while, the dramatic pause. <laughs> Raise your eyebrows a little bit. Cast your eyes around the audience. By the way, that takes up about 30 seconds of the recording time. <laughs> and then, you're ready to begin. Now, what's very uh, hilarious in my, uh, in my mind is that uh, most people associate an event with something quite negative where public speaking is concerned, right? Fear of public speaking, they, what was that the whole thing? Uh, fear of public speaking is higher than the fear of death kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, just out of curiosity, if you had a lion, a wild lion in this room, what would you do? Miss, what would you do? I'd go out and kiss it. You'd go out and kiss it? This, this is what causes headlines in places like Florida. You go out and take selfies with an alligator. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, traditionally, uh, aside from some weirdos in the room, <laughs> uh, what, what, would you, what would you typically do? Or what would you expect people to do? Run away. Run away, right? But, uh, you know, 
that, that's, that's a common response. That's a common response. But do you notice that if it's not a lion, if it's, let's say, a cockroach, how many of you would actually respond just as uh, as frightfully as you saw a wild lion? You actually run away as well. How many of you? How many of you can kill a cockroach with your bare hands? Kill a cockroach with your bare hands. Right? It's not a problem, right? Now here's the thing. Think of your thoughts, the way you visualize yourself as a cockroach. If you have, if your thoughts are all, okay, so if you imagine just for a moment, right, that you are able to use your hands and grab a cockroach. Uh, okay, for those of you who cannot take it, just raise your hand, okay? Uh, grab a cockroach, feel the scurry sensation of the cockroach, and then do this. Okay. And then look at it and go. <laughs> That's horrible. And then. Okay. Now, at which stage did I get you? Was it the scurry? Was it the? Or was it the? Which one? Maybe the smelling, right? So what's happening inside your mind is that you're intensifying a horrible feeling. Right? You're bringing it closer to you, you're experience it, uh, experiencing it further. That's partly neuro-linguistic programming. If I want to increase the intensity of something, I bring it closer, I make it more vibrant so that I can experience it. But why in the world am I rehearsing this when I should be over here thinking about what was the last time I felt really confident about myself? How did I stand? What was I breathing like? Okay, was I smiling or was I like standard? Singaporean uh, face. You know, that's, that's, you know what's the standard Singaporean face? Sir? Have you seen it before? It's like that. <laughs> How are you feeling, sir? <laughs> it's like that, you know? So, when was the last time you actually felt confident about yourself? And, and what's the sensation you had in your body when you're absolutely thrilled to come and share some information with someone? And it's not so easy. Most of you have, may not have experienced this before. So what I'd like all of you to do, just as a, as a starter, is actually, I want you to find your center when you're standing uh, here, where you plant your feet and you get a sense of your center. Your center is usually somewhere around here where your navel is. And when you are centered, you can relax and you can feel as if you're grounded. It's almost as if you're a tree, right? You're just rooted there and it feels awesomely wonderful, okay? So can I invite all of you to kindly stand up? And I need you to find a partner for this exercise. A partner for this exercise, all right?